You might think you don't want any credit, mm. but banks actually want to yeah. see how you conduct yourself. So getting the right type of credit mm. is important, mm. right? And making sure that you look at the interest rates that you get from your credit products is mm. really important. So you need to make sure you get a competitive interest rate on the credit products that you have, but at the same time not to overextend yourself. Right. What I did was that I spoke to the different, you know, the different banks and I told them, you know, this bank is offering me this much, how much can you give me? Mm. Eventually, you know, there's playing between the different banks. Eventually, you know, I've got the best outcome. Good evening and welcome back to the first time home by a show this evening. I am with an absolutely amazing guest. As you heard, we're talking about savings tools. We're talking about affordability. This is definitely a show you do not want to miss, but do not forget, we have amazing content coming to your screens live every weekday this week. We've got Zaman Tungwa Kumalo with the Private Property Podcast, and that's live at 7 p.m. on Facebook. And of course, we've got Mbali if you're interested in farming and agriculture. That's live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Do not forget Mbali is reaching her 100th episode. It's something you do not want to miss. We talk crops, farming, mushrooms, everything you need to know there. And Chad Vavieros travels in Zanzi. He goes to amazing townhouses, anything from Danefern to Eagle Canyon, amazing homes. Chad Vavieros comes to your screens every Monday and Friday at 8 p.m. What a way to go into the weekend. And without further ado, my app absolutely amazing guest, Kinosi Rakosa. She has been in a home and we're sitting in a lovely home, actually right now, gorgeous home. And Kinosi, you've only been here for 13 days. Yes, I have. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining and sharing your story and your journey with us on the First Time Home Buyer Show. I love, absolutely love hearing from First Time Home Buyers because it just proves the, you know, the possibility of this journey. And of course, it's daunting. And that's what we're going to get into. So, you know, see, tell me a little bit about you just before we go into your home ownership journey. Okay, so um, in terms of Kinosi, I am 31 years old, soon to be turning 32. I have three degrees actually and I recently wow. got my master's in business management all from the University of Johannesburg. So in terms of my career, I started working within the banking industry 12 years ago and I've worked for small banks, large banks and at the moment I'm working for a fintech. And on a personal note, I'm the last one of two girls. I also have a nephew and my parents are still very close to my heart. And in terms of what I like to do, I like to cook and bake. I actually started a small business with my sister. Nice. I'm not nearly as involved in it as my sister, mm. um, as the rest of my family is because I'm working full time, but that's what I like to do. And I also am very active. I love to spin, run and play tennis. So that's me in a nutshell. That's amazing. On that note, have you, I'm sure you've cooked and baked in your own home. What was that feeling like? It was absolutely I have this wonderful Malva pudding recipe and um, I just die, like Malva pudding is my favorite. And to actually put it in the stove and just to get the smell in the oh, house, can you imagine? it's actually my house. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. I can imagine. Please share that recipe before we leave. <laughs> <laughs> I love Malva. Um, you know, one day I'll be able to also make it in my own home. Yeah. But on this, you know, on this journey, and of course, you've got, you said three degrees. That's absolutely amazing. And I know a, a little bit of your uh, bio, you shared that, you know, there was a time of your, in your life where you could afford to buy a home. All your friends around you were buying the yeah. property. You just, you didn't. Yeah, so for me, um, you know, I started working in the banking industry and, you know, some of the perks that come with working in a bank is that you get preferential interest mm. rates. So a lot of the people around me were actually buying a house. And for me, the pleasure about working in a banking industry is that you really learn a lot about financial management mm. and credit. So for me, I could easily apply and qualify for a home loan, but that didn't necessarily mean I could afford it. Right. So I wanted to wait for the right time when I could actually afford it. Mm. So yes, a lot of people around me were buying homes and you know, obviously to a certain extent you do feel some level of yeah. pressure, but you know, I was centered around my own purpose and my journey mm. and that's why I wanted to wait up until I've got the right financial backing to actually afford mm. the house, not just to be approved for it. Right. And uh, you took a while to save, but before I even get there, you've got this, it's you're almost like privileged the fact that you have this financial background and you know you're financially literate um, and what is it that you what would you say 
financially that working in the banking kind of sector that has taught you financially? So for me, working in the banking industry, you learn a lot about credit. Mm. Right? So you learn a lot about how to build a credit profile. So for me, I understand the ins and outs. I've actually worked in a credit product. Yeah. So I know what banks actually need mm. in order to qualify for a credit product. Yeah. So the type of behavior that you need to conduct yourself in in order to qualify for those products. But over and above that, actually managing your credit portfolio. So you don't want to overextend yourself. So yeah. you know, learning the things around how to manage your portfolio to make sure that you are keeping yourself on a, on a good track. But at the same time, ensuring that you actually use your banking and your financial literacy to enjoy the perks of life. Right. Not just, you know, delving yourself into lots and lots of debt, but also creating wealth to a certain extent. Mm. So ensuring that you've got a portfolio around savings, you know, healthy banking profile. So for me, I learned a lot about credit, but at the same time, how to really manage my money in an efficient way right. in order to build up to a big purchase, such as a whole. Mm. To, to a younger viewer watching and hearing all of that, I feel like it's, you know, quite a, a mouthful and kind of like a, you know, so much knowledge because also I feel the biggest issue, especially with me, uh, on my journey to buying my first home is the jargon and the terminology used, even going to the banking uh, sector and hearing these things from these financial heads and just being so overwhelmed by this process. How did you as Kenosi kind of help what certain tangible things, what steps did you take to ensure that you had a good credit record to afford this home? So for me, in terms of um, managing my credit profile, firstly, I, you you know, you might think you don't want any credit, mm. but banks actually want to yeah. see how you conduct yourself. So getting the right type of credit mm. is important, mm. right? And making sure that you look at the interest rates that you get from your credit products is mm. really important. So you need to make sure you get a competitive interest rate on the credit products that you have, but at the same time, not to overextend yourself. Right. So by overextend yourself is, you know, you get a loan, a credit card, a store card, a contract, a cell phone contract. So yeah. everything is on credit. And at the end of the day, your disposable income or the money that you have left at the end of the month is very small. Right. In that way, you won't be able to qualify. So it's about making sure you get the balance Right. right so getting credit that keeps you going to a certain extent so a small credit card loan mm. and thereafter making sure the interest rate is very mm. competitive on that interest mm. on that credit card and ensuring that you pay your credit on time right. so uh, the easiest way i do it is i get a debit order i don't have to worry yeah. about making sure that i pay it on time and so right. forth Thereafter, you know, making sure that, you know, you um, pay the set amount, so the agreed amount or even over and above More, that yeah. to make sure that you build your credit profile mm. and not to overextend yourself on that credit, right? Right. So, you know, the good mark is really around 50% or less mm. of your credit loan in order to really build up your credit mm. profile. And typically banks look at your credit profile over a six month period to make sure that you know, from a bureau perspective, because all these credit um, institutions actually yeah. report on your conduct on a credit bureau. Exactly. So those are the things that I learned. And obviously then also mixing it up with making sure that I've got enough saved for the registration costs mm. and anything further mm. um, to make sure that I can um, purchase the home. All right. You took, you said two years to save? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, so um, I actually, you know, I moved out very late from my parents' house. Mm -hmm. I, moved out, I think when I was about 30 years old. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, you know, I used time to save up. Um, not just to say that, but also started investing. So right. I've got the Easy Equities app, which yeah. makes investing really, really simple. simple. So for me, you know, I made sure I've got all these things in my awesome. Mm. And I started saving up towards the registration costs mm. and the bond costs. And also, I decided to rent first. Right. right. And in terms of renting, it was for me to test the waters. Right. You know, can I really afford this? What's happening mm. and anything else? Get the lessons learned from renting. Mm. And then I went in and, and bought the house that I wanted. That's such a good tool you know, to start obviously renting first because there are people who, you know, live with their parents and then buy immediately. And then they're like, oh no. You know, some there are costs involved that I had no idea. Yes. Um, renting, that's such a good tool, and I think that's some advice to first time home buyers. You know, rent, even if it's just for a year or six months, yes. but it, it, I think it's so key and pivotal also uh, yourself being alone. And you figure that out when you're renting. You know, you figure it out, you figure out how to be by yourself. Can you manage your finances alone? 
are you able to be on your own? Exactly. So mm. for me, um, you know, living on my own, uh, you know, I started feeling, okay, so there's actually, you know, electricity, because, you know, my parents used to cover all those yeah. things before, right? Yeah. So there's water, electricity, you have to buy your own groceries, mm. you know, there's yeah. all these other things that you might not necessarily ordinarily know if you're yeah. living with your parents. And if you're renting, it grants you the opportunity to really suss out, you know, mm. how much can you have left behind yeah. in order to pay for, you know, the house that you want. So you start budgeting around the house that you want. Mm. This is what I can actually afford. So this is actually how much I spend on electricity on a month. This is how much I spend on water every yeah. month. So now you, you get a clear view of your costs before right. you actually make that commitment around buying a, a house. house. Yeah. Because that's inevitable. You have to spend that money every month when you're buying, when you've, you know, been approved for the home loan, etc. Was this always your goal? Absolutely. Yeah. So for me, home ownership has always been the, mm. the end goal for mm. me. What renting for me was was short term. You know, mm. I, I knew. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to live. You know, pay for someone else's rent or for their bond rather. Mm over a long period. Um, for me, the goal has been to have my own space, you know, to, I suppose, you know, hang things the way that I want, yeah. you know, without worrying about the landlord, worrying about, you know, putting, putting a hole here, or, yeah. all of that, you know, and also just to have that yeah. sense of ownership around what you own. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's just always been a dream of mine. Mm. So, I, you know, I've just asked if this was always your goal. And a lot of uh, property investors, actually, I'm just going to take it a, a step further say that buying property and even after buying their first home this whole thing becomes addictive does it stop here for you does it end here no okay <laughs> okay <Definitely not. laughs> no um, mm. for me i would definitely love to buy a second home mm. um most likely maybe when i decide to settle down <laughs> with someone and you know i start having kids you know the bigger space that would be lovely and ultimately, I think when I retire as well, right. um, you know, to get a smaller space. So yeah, that's... That it's, yeah, it doesn't stop here. Yeah. No, and I think it's so important that, you know, once you do buy your first home, that you start making it a home, making the house a home. Yeah. You've only been here for 13 days. What has that been like? It's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So um, I'm still waiting for the blinds, you right. know, I think. But the exciting part has been decorating it, right? Yeah. So for me, I've been looking particularly mostly online like mm -hmm. these stores you know you get to decorate it the way that yeah. you want so you know this couch and then I picked it out you know everything here yeah, I've just you know started looking for interior like mm. looking at interior decorators you know how do you decorate your home yeah. it's really exciting and for me the fun part is I can hang up things right that I couldn't hang things up at my previous place mm. because you know yeah, the holes the wasn't holes, your, yeah. Etc. So, you know, uh, the management of the place didn't mm. like that. So, fortunately, now I've got my own paintings and I, I, I'm really putting it up in such a way that it represents me. Mm. You know? And I think that's the fun part about it more than anything. Yeah. Is that, you know, you've got this sense of freedom mm. around how you want to put it together. Exactly. So. And I wanted to find out from you, you know, being in your own space. This entire journey, right, you said you saved for two years, but then now the process of finding the perfect home, what was that like? Um, it was a bit daunting, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think typically um, when I went online mm -hmm. and you know, private property has you know, a wide variety yeah. of so my rental space as oh, well. Wow. So I started looking around and I did a few viewings in and around the area. Uh, but I eventually decided that I didn't really want a, an existing home or a home that had people that living in it already. All right. Because I wanted a place that was kind of brand new. Yeah. In the sense that, you know, I wouldn't have to maintain it as much mm. because it's still new. Yeah. As well as the bond and registration costs that come with it. Right. So then while I was on private property, the developer where I bought the house, you know, their advert came up and I just clicked on it. You know, I started, I looked at the artist impressions yeah. and it looked really good online. Mm. And, you know, I looked at the developer, they had a very good rep repertoire. Mm. So I thought, okay, they've got a very good reputation. Let me actually leverage off them and trust them with this big purchase. Right. And I bought a plan. And how, what was that like? Because you're actually one of my first guests who's done something like, and for your first home, yeah. that's terrifying. Because what if it like yeah. doesn't come out the way that it was on the plan? I know, right? <laughs> and I suppose that's the thing about yeah. being a little bit younger, mm. in the sense that, you know, you're not nearly as afraid to try things online. And take these risks, because yeah. Because 
you know, you, you, you're a digital native to a certain extent. Yeah. So you're used to buying things online. Yeah. Even though a big purchase like a house is also being bought <laughs> online. But, you know, I trusted them in a sense and I looked at the pictures and I looked at the engagement with me, how they spoke to me, mm. you know, their level of their reputation in the market as well was really critical for me because right. it's very easy to fall victim to scams mm. online. So, you know, I did my background research on them mm. from that perspective. And for me, what I liked the most was the fact that it was new. Right. And I don't want a lot of, you know, I've got friends that have mm. bought existing houses and, you know, they're fixing things that yeah. shouldn't ordinarily be fixed when you move right. it. Right, to a new, so, your first home. Yeah. Yeah, and you haven't had, because I was actually about to ask, like, any issues that come with it because... Yes, so in terms of, I have identified a few things that they need to fix in the right. house, but fortunately, you know, I've got a 30-day period yeah. where they can still come in and mm. fix them. So, you know, there was issue with the geezer not working. They yeah. can fix it very quickly. Nice. So within the, the next 30 days, I've got a snags list that I'm putting together. Right. Send it to them. They'll fix it and address it. So from that perspective, you know, mm. I feel a sense of relief. Yeah. That I don't have to worry about coming. Right. <laughs> that. So True. buying your first home is a job, hey? It is, but it's but it's a fun, home. yeah. It's absolutely exciting, and I mean, I think for me, mm. uh, you know, being able to, uh, to to be in this kind of position, is, it, uh, I'm really grateful for mm. it. Um, you know, I know a lot of people that might not necessarily have the same opportunities that I've had, right. but for me, it, it really is just uh, a really humbling experience. Right. Me. What were like your top three things that you wanted in your home? I know a lot of people, you know, before... Um, and this is so crazy, right? I recently spoke to someone who they needed to walk into the home yeah. and feel it with their energy, and that's how they knew this was the one. You didn't kind, you didn't have the opportunity to do that. So for me, first and foremost mm. is the area. Mm. I'm Joburg born and raised. Yeah. But um, you know, there's certain areas in Joburg that really appeal to me in terms of the lifestyle. So yeah. the area for me was really critical. So the fact that there's lots of restaurants, there's lots of things to do yeah. in and around the area, that was critical first. Yeah. Um, you know, because a lot of my friends are actually in this um, in the, in area, the area yeah. that I'm in. So from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, in terms of the look and feel, I want something it's relatively big. Right. I was renting a two-bedroom apartment, mm. so this is at least a double story. Yeah. So it's got a little bit more space, and you know, it really had to appeal to me visually. Mm. You know, it had to look fresh, modern. Yeah. You know, it really needed to speak to Gingos in the sense, you know, yeah. represent me, an extension of me. Mm. And I felt it was when I looked at it, even the garden on the outside, really lush and green and right. beautiful. Um, and the fact that you know some of the small touches for me yeah. spoke to me in terms of the bathtub, you know the way that it looks, mm. as well as you know the fittings like you know the windows, the aluminium windows. Yeah. So it's the small touches, um, you know the marble table, kitchen table, all of that. Those were the things mm. that I was looking for. And of course the oven for the malva pudding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the oven for the malva. Yeah, the malva pudding. <laughs> has to be there. Uh, Kinosi, I wanted to find out from you, would you recommend to first-time home buyers to actually buy off a plan like you did, buy into a development? Um, definitely, because from a registration perspective, okay, register, even if, it, if it's a development, some of them do have short yeah. prices available, but to a large extent, it saves you a large cost mm. from the upfront costs associated with it. So um, that is one of the key benefits, especially for a first time home buyer. Um, secondly, in terms of off plan, I would say if you're going to buy off plan, make sure that you've really looked at the impressions, the artist's impressions. You've actually gone through the floor plan and how the house is going to look and construct it. Right. Just to make sure that you're happy with how it will be structured. And when you read through the sale of agreement, mm. make sure that you've checked you know, whether or not you like how they've sized the bathrooms right. and all the rooms and all of that. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, make sure that you also do your research around, you know, the developer that you're buying from. Yeah. You know, similarly with any other <clears throat> buying a house, you know, there's a lot of scams out there. Mm. So we need to be very vigilant around that. Yeah. And make sure you do your homework before buying off plan because, you know, you might get ripped off. And, but fortunately, banks have a lot of checks and balances around Right. Those. So, um, you know, a lot to a large extent that's, that risk is mitigated, mm. but, you know, just to uh, put yourself at ease, Easier. also do your background research. 
how f how far could you go with negotiation? A lot of first time home buyers say that, guys, we can negotiate. I did. Oh, I really? Did. Aggressively, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a heavy bargainer, right? Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I want to make sure that I stretch my money as much as I possibly can. So what I did was the bond originators took my application to different banks. Right. And the banks all came back with their offer to me in terms of the interest rates. So for me, I wanted to make sure I got the most competitive interest rate mm -hmm. because that is ultimately going to determine how much I pay right. on a monthly basis. And what I did was that I spoke to the different, you know, the different banks and I told them, you know, this bank is offering me this much, how much can you give me? Mm. Eventually, you know, there's playing between the different banks. Eventually, you know, I got the best outcome. Mm. Um, so I got a prime minus 2% rate. Oh, wow. So it was very competitive. Yeah. And then how important would you, because you talk a lot about researching. And um, in your case, obviously, you needed to see if it was a reputable developer or whatever the case may be. But researching different things, such as like hidden costs that come with these things, how important would you say that is? Um, it's absolutely critical as well. So, you know, especially specifically when you come to signing your sale of agreement, mm. it's really critical to understand what are the costs associated with the actual um, acquisition of the house. Right. So, in terms of making sure that you've got um, you know, you understand the transfer costs, the registration costs, mm. um, whether or not you have to pay an occupational rent uh, for the first month, which I had to pay for. Oh, wow. Well. Um, <laughs> you know, all those yeah. things, you've got to understand that. You mm. know, there's, um, you know, some developers, um, they uh, price you for registering with um, the water, oh. with rand water, yeah. whatever. So you've got to consider all those costs associated with it mm. and make sure that you understand it ask the questions mm. you know you know because you need to know yeah you know, even if it, it sounds like you're being pedantic right. but ultimately you've got to understand what you're getting yourself into exactly it's a, it's a really big commitment and a lot of first-time home buyers talk about how important it is to save because these costs come from nowhere like it hits you by surprise so it's so good you know that you have an extra bit of cash that you can a comment or give to the certain thing, whatever the case may be. And just uh, last week, we spoke to another first time home buyer who was literally hit by surprise by a few things. And luckily, also, she was saving. And there are lifestyle changes that come with this. What does Kinosi's lifestyle changes? And yeah. what is your savings tool? Okay, so in terms of my lifestyle changes, um, um, you know, fortunately for me, I, I can put aside certain money. So, I, what I did was um, you know, I, I cut down on the un entertainment of it. Right. You know, so not going out as much to the restaurants with my friends. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, you know, when you've got friends that fully understand what you're trying to achieve, yeah. they'll be more than happy to support you. Of journey. course. Um, and in terms of my savings tools, so initially I used to use you know, trusts quite aggressively. Mm -hmm. um, also 32 days notice. Uh, but I also have a demand product, which I can put in money, find it any time I've got money. So whenever I've got an extra 250 rand, instead of going to the restaurant, I just put it into that account. And you know, it all adds up. Mm. Um, and also, what I've, as I said a bit earlier, is that I've actually started using um, invest, um, easy equity. So yeah. I started investing. So, you know, I've got this pool of different tools, yeah, to tools to actually save up. Mm. So those are the tools Yes, you just brought something to mind now uh, when you said, you know, and I think it's so important because a lot of people, when we think savings, we like take the bulk, take like a big 4,000 or 5,000 and just save it. And you're, it's when you have, you know, spare change, two, 200 rand, yes. save that. Yes. And, you know, it, it can be quite intimidating. Yeah. Right. So, you know, for me and my friends, you know, I can literally go to a restaurant every weekend with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when, you, when that all adds up, yeah. you know, it can be like 3,000, 4,000, you know, it's a lot of money. Mm. Unfortunately, I don't go to clubs or anything, so I save up on that. Right. Um, but nonetheless, you know, it's, you know, if you put in a little bit, it's mm. that little bit that counts. And what I also did on my side was for the occupational rate, for instance, mm. what I did was I started putting it, they told me, I think six months before, mm -hmm. so I started literally putting money into the account. Okay. And I got it. Oh, so nice. So by the time I moved in, I didn't have that this was huge amount to that pay. That to pay, yeah. So, yeah. That makes sense. Were there any lessons uh, that came with this, like life-changing lessons, or even a little bit of advice for first-time home buyers? Um, you know, I would say definitely take your time. Mm. You know, I think for me, the the biggest lesson that I learned 
throughout this journey is that you know buying a house is a, it's, it's a long term um, achievement, right? And it's 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 going to you shouldn't it's a commitment. Don't rush into it. Yeah. Don't feel pressured into it. Yeah. You know, do it at the right time with the right goal in mm. mind. You know, don't do it because you're feeling pressured. This person's doing it. This. Yeah. Person, I need to do it, and I need, you know, take your time. You know. Come up with your own strategy. Come up with what works for you. Yeah. What worked for me was let me test the waters, let me rent first, find out what works for me, mm. and then go in big bang mm. and then start working on it. But ultimately, what you need to do as a person, you know, when you're buying your first home, is really find something that speaks to you. Mm. You know, what speaks to me is not going to be the same for you. Yeah. You know, I've got friends that are living very far from me, but they're quite happy with their with their chief, yeah. with their house. But for me, my house has been, you know, it speaks to who King Lucy is. Exactly. And, you know, the, that will make you more happy than just buying anything yeah. for the sake of buying. Exactly. It. Buy something that speaks to you mm. and your journey. Do you have any regrets? Um, regrets? No. 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 <laughs> None whatsoever. None. That's a really good thing though, because it means that this journey, you know, and you're a you're a new new homeowner, like new new. And maybe some something from you because you know, we all we buy houses but we make homes. What is your kind of key strategy to making this place a home? I know you're very excited about buying the furniture yeah, and yeah. buying these new things. What else are you? So what I've done on my side is it, it actually happened by coincidence. Mm -hmm. Um, was that um, you know I went to the mall around the area, and what I did was that I literally bumped into this painting of uh, an elephant. Oh wow! And you know in the African culture, in my culture, um, you know what we do is you know we've got a clan name, mm -hmm. and our clan name is, is a clan name is usually associated with an animal. Right. Right. One of the big five. And mine is an elephant. Oh wow! So for me, I put it up, and I asked my dad to put up that painting for me because he—that's his clan right. name, right? Yeah. And it was just such a, a powerful moment, mm. you know, a surreal moment. Wow! Because you know, I asked my dad to put up the painting of you know the elephant oh. because that's that's our clan. Exactly. And he was so excited, and oh, for wow. me, it was you know just such a moving moment. Mm. Um, it's already a home. That's the yeah. image we're talking yeah, about right there. It's yes, beautiful. Yes, yes. This is a home and thank you so much for inviting us. Yes. Um, thank you for all the advice that you've given and I think what I would like to advise other first time home buyers, you, your step that you took to kind of educate yourself is to rent first or to stay at home for a bit to save. And these, I love talking to first time home buyers because these are tools that we educate other viewers on and this is exactly what we should be doing. And we just, you know, need to continue. It's saving is so important. I can't even reiterate that enough. It is so important. Um, but again, thank you, Kinosi, for taking the time out. And it's evening, it's late, I'm so sorry. <laughs> thank you for inviting us into your home. Do you have any last words that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of, for me, um, the critical important thing for me, always when it comes to buying a home, mm. is make sure that you can qualify for it is one thing, but make sure you can afford it. Mm. And, um, you know, a lot of, uh, financial advisors, particularly those on social media, were saying, don't buy a house, interest rates are going to come up, it was mm. because of the pandemic, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, ultimately, you know, every situation is different, every financial situation is different, but the important thing is making sure that you factor into consideration. Interest rates will certainly go up, most likely, I mean, in terms of, of what economists are, economists are projecting. But ultimately, what matters most is whether or not you can afford it. Yeah. And by afford it, I mean, does your income substantiate? Is it substantial enough to mm. quantify or uh, qualify? Can your income match when the interest rates grow up? Yes. And that's the important thing. Mm. Right? Being ready for that change. Being ready for that change. And not just that, take into consideration all your other expenses, your disposable income, mm. will it be enough in order for you to live a fairly comfortable life exactly. once interest rates have gone up yeah. and once you know the house expenses has been mm. taken into consideration. And we're definitely gonna get to that point. Yes, but don't be deterred by people mm. saying don't buy because interest rates are low because of the yeah. no, That's not always the case. Every individual is different, take into consideration yours and of being able to be approved for credit does not necessarily mean you can afford Forward. it. Yeah, that's a very good lesson. I have one final question. Um, this is the first time you're sharing 
your journey with uh, within you've probably shared it with friends and whatever the case may be but you know this is to viewers people we don't know um what is that like to hear your own story i think when it's it's, it's always uh, it, it feels a bit unreal you know to have <laughs> the beautiful self, the beautiful self here. You. You have your team here. Yeah. You know, these cameras rolling. Or it, it just, you know, I, I mean, you know, there's something called the imposter syndrome. Mm. You know, sometimes <laughs> I just feel like you're stepping into something which it's kind of like, am I supposed to be here? Yeah. <laughs> this is really me. These cameras. I've seen all these celebrities yeah. you know, behind the scenes shots. <laughs> But I'm here and it's, it's you happening. know, yeah. Uh, but you know, to be able to share my story mm. with other people mm. and hopefully to be able to touch them and to educate them around my journey mm. and if that can inspire them, that would be absolutely fantastic. Mm. So thank you so much. It's definitely inspired me. Thank you so so much. And to everyone watching at home, do not forget we are live every Wednesday night on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at 8 p.m. Take care.